time to travel back to an era where flying saucers, strange creatures, and exclamation points were invading the world. Or at least our movie screens. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 science fiction movies of the 1950s. For this list, we're taking a look at the most iconic films from the 50s that shaped science fiction into the beloved genre it is today. Without them, popular culture, not to mention culture in general, would be missing a beacon of imagination and inspiration. No. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades of sci-fi flicks from the 1950s to the 2000s. If there are no objections, please start the drawing. Number 10, Them. If you watch Them without knowing anything about the plot beforehand, you'll probably be taken aback to learn the Them in question are giant ants. These two empty egg cases contain queen ants. Even if insects weren't what you were expecting though, the monstrous insects are still pretty awesome technical achievements constructed through the finest practical effects the 50s had to offer. Them works wonderfully as a big bug movie, notably being the first of its kind. He said he'd never seen anything like it. Needless to say, this black and white horror film isn't for anybody who suffers from entomophobia. Is this it, Doctor? Now, new princesses, new queens. Yes, this is the egg chamber, the same as we found in New Mexico. Number 9, The Blob. <laughs> Combining elements of sci-fi and horror, The Blob produces the kind of popcorn charm only 1950s cinema could deliver. Come back, come back! The film takes place in the classic small town setting in which a meteorite lands. <sighs> From within arises a gelatinous monster that grows larger with each human it consumes. What is it he's got on his hand? Well, I don't know, Doc. It was kind of like a, a, well, a big blister on his fingers. The town's only hope is a 28-year-old Steve McQueen, playing a character almost half his age. Mm, I told you I got to leave now. The Blob provides exactly what one would want from an old-fashioned monster movie. <laughs> while also supplying a giant wad of jelly with an intimidating presence. Hey, <laughs> Number 8, The Thing from Another World. Watch it, everybody. That thing's out of the greenhouse. Be sure and stay together. This Christian Nyby film follows an Air Force crew stationed in the Arctic that finds what they believe to be a fallen plane. It's an airplane, all right. Instead, they uncover a flying saucer frozen in the ice where a malevolent creature awaits. Yo, I'm not your enemy. I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist who's trying to... Hiding this wild alien in the shadows for much of the running time, the Thing from Another World is almost a psychological thriller in its pacing and tense plotting. Moving pretty fast, wasn't it? Just as much as it's a science fiction horror flick. <laughs> Snowy backdrops only add to the isolated tone, amounting to one of the 50s eeriest films, which still has us watching the skies. A few minutes from now, we may have the key to the stars. A million years of history are waiting for us in that ice. Let me know when. I want to get a picture. Number 7, Godzilla. Retitled Godzilla, King of the Monsters, for the 1956 Americanized version, the original Japanese Godzilla pioneered the kaiju genre. Many people these days view Godzilla as nothing more than a big silly monster, but what's striking about the first Godzilla is how seriously it takes itself, drawing inspiration from the atomic bombings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It goes to show that while Godzilla might seem like a simplistic character, there's more to him than senseless violence. Tabikasa naru, 
That being said, the action here is still kick-ass, cementing the prehistoric monster as the ultimate beast. Number 6. Forbidden Planet Something funny down there, Skipper. Where many sci-fi movies of the 50s focused on aliens coming to Earth, Forbidden Planet had the audacity to take mankind to a foreign world beyond our wildest dreams. Commander, if you set down on this planet, I warn you that I cannot be answerable for the safety of your ship or your crew. The film travels to Altair 4, which is a bit like a planetary garden of Eden, full of beauty and lurking with temptation. Morning. Morning. Through this journey into the unknown, our heroes discover a wondrous lost civilization, ancient technology, and let us not forget, Robbie the Robot. That is correct, sir. For your convenience, I am monitored to respond to the name Robbie. It's an adventure that would impact every interstellar exploration tale for generations to come. Number 5. Journey to the Center of the Earth Wonderful to look at with a terrific sense of adventure, what really distinguishes Journey to the Center of the Earth is its delightful humor. It's unthinkable, but it must be true. A man took some tools and went where no human being had ever set foot, alone. Went into the interior of the Earth. The film follows a band of witty heroes brought to life by several charismatic actors and one duck. And Gertrude the duck. Providing a welcome alternative to the blank slate protagonists most moviegoers were used to at the time. <laughs> Although the film isn't afraid to be suspenseful and dark at times too, Journey to the Center of the Earth mainly concerns itself with being flat out fun. Stop! They are warning. You'll never find your companions or your way out. You need me as much as I need you. Stop and come back! Number 4. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Fish that got away is always the biggest one. Walt Disney was undeniably one of the most influential visionaries who ever lived. The whale of a tale or two about the flapping fish and the girls I've loved on nights like this with the moon above. Taking stories everyone deemed unfilmable and making them reality. Why didn't you say so? This is what I've been waiting for. So it was only natural that he would eventually tackle the science fiction genre. I know there'd be a catch to this. Disney couldn't have selected a more fitting sci-fi project for his studio than 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Thank you, baby. Along with director Richard Fleischer, Disney adapted the classic novel by Jules Verne into a sophisticated steampunk adventure with inventive sets, splendid visuals, and the most memorable giant squid ever put to film. Number 3. Invasion of the Body Snatchers When they're finished, what happens to our bodies? This is definitely one of the most unique alien invasion movies of the 50s. Plants from another world taking over human beings. Mad as a March Hare. The audience virtually never sees the aliens or their technology, excluding the pods from which they emerge. The whole town's been taken over by the pods. This just adds another level of suspense to the narrative, though, reminding us just how effective the unseen can be. But if you'd seen it, you'd understand why we waited. Throughout this science fiction horror flick, the filmmakers also provide an open-ended allegory that hints at the dangers of conformity and communism. Listen to me! We're in danger! Get out of the street! Danger! Go on! Get out of here! You're in danger! As far as low-budget B-movies go, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is grade A movie magic. Our wives, our children, everyone! They're here already! You're next! Number 2. The War of the Worlds Super science, menacing all mankind and every creature on Earth, comes the War of the Worlds. Fifteen years after Orson Welles' all-too-convincing radio broadcast, H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds was adapted to the screen through the skillful direction of Byron Haskin. Get her to cover! The Martians in this version are among the most distinctive of the time. Do you think they come from Mars? Oozing with a colorful flair. The film not only looks great, but sounds fantastic too, summing up the majesty of 50s sci-fi with a single laser zap. This is arguably the definitive picture about aliens attacking man, 
further popularizing the formula and archetypes we've all come to know and rip off. Before we take off to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. She'll tear up the whole town till she finds Harry. Yeah, then she'll tear up Harry. I know it's worth it! Stop him, Turner. He's close enough. Turn off your electro gun. No! No! Stop him, Turner! I can't get it, it's jammed! Stop him, you fool! Number one, the day the Earth stood still. Got Moringa. Most space invader movies from this period put an emphasis on the destructive nature of aliens. In this Robert Wise classic, however, aliens aren't humanity's inevitable doom, but a voice of reason. We have come to visit you in peace and with goodwill. The black and white movie makes intelligent commentary on mankind's greatest flaws that have led to war and prejudice. I am fearful when I see people substituting fear for reason. In doing so, The Day the Earth Stood Still proved that science fiction could be more than just a campy good time at the movies. Everybody agrees, there is grave danger. The question remains, what can we do to protect ourselves? The genre could also be used as a vessel to tell meaningful stories about society. Your choice is simple. Join us and live in peace, or pursue your present course and face obliteration. Do you agree with our list? The decision rests with you. What's your favorite sci-fi movie from the 1950s? <coughs> For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It'll be done. Report to me when this has been accomplished. Thank <music> you.